Hey everybody and welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're going to talk about Mandalorian Season 2. Hey everybody and welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Brent Casina, and today we're going to be talking about Mandalorian Season 2. Now, I'm going to talk about my thoughts about the series, the season in general, but we are going to get into spoilers. So if you have not finished The Mandalorian Season 2 or Season 1, what are you doing here? Go watch them on Disney+, Plus, then come right back here and finish the video. Did you finish it? What would you think? All right, let's go. So I don't talk a lot of Star Wars on this channel. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. By, by There are bigger Star Wars fans out there by far. Uh, as you can see on the wall behind me, I don't have any Star Wars stuff. Uh, I was just looking for props here in the uh, the man cave, and I came across this one. This is the Boba Fett uh, bobblehead. This is like an exclusive pop from the Smuggler's Bounty box that was out a few years ago. And then, of course, um, my Star Wars box set, which I got for Christmas one year. I think this cost like 80 bucks at the time. It's ridiculous. The, the, what they want you to pay for the Lord of the Rings on 4K, which is like 20 years old, is also like 50 bucks or 80 bucks. Or, it's rid also ridiculous. Like, Jesus Christ. Um, anyway, yeah, this is the four-disc, four-set version with this little documentary, which now, I think this is on Disney+, Plus. this documentary, Empire of Dreams or whatever. Yeah. What the heck? So... I just, I still have all my DVDs. I haven't gotten rid of any of them yet, but um, it's kind of on my list of things to do, honestly. Because I could use the, the shelf space for more books and stuff like that. But we are here to talk Mandalorian and talk some Star Wars. Now, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. There are bigger ones out there by far, but I do like me some Star Wars. Um, I've seen all the Clone Wars videos or, or episodes. I'm still making my way through Rebels. I was thinking that, you know, maybe my, it's a little more kiddie. So I was trying to get my daughter and my son to watch it with me, and they're not really that interested in it. So I might just power through it myself. So I'm not up on all the lore of what's happened in between, you know, Episode 3 and Episode 4 and all that stuff that where Rebels takes place. But I am caught up on The Mandalorian and everything else after that. I was not a big fan of The Last Jedi, so I kind of fall into that camp. I'm not out there bashing it or anything like that on forums, and, you know, I'm not defending the other two movies either. Uh, what I didn't like about Last Jedi is that it seemed to take all the ideas from the first one and throw them out entirely. I know people were a fan of that. I kind of like the idea, but, hey, whatever. Can't change the past, right? I think the biggest thing for me is that I really wanted Finn to be a, a Jedi, you know, he had this awesome moment in Episode 7 and just... Sorry. Anyway, Mandalorian, it seems, is redeeming Star Wars to the point where there are now, what, 10 or 11 new Star Wars things coming on Disney+, Plus, which is mind-boggling. Um, the amount of Star... I thought they were... Remember how they said, you know, after... Um, uh, the la not The Last Jedi, The Rise of Skywalker came out. They're like, we're going to take a break on the movies. And then Mandalorian blows up last year. And they were like, we're not going to take a break on Star Wars, though. Um, right, who knows? The Patty Jenkins Rogue Squadron movie I'm excited about. If that's the next one up, great. Let's go. Taika Waititi, let's go. If the Game of Thrones guys want to do their stuff, fine. I hope someone helps them write the ending. You know? <laughs> Uh, you know, figures that out. Now, I'm not blaming Game of Thrones on them, but we'll see what George does, and then we can truly rest, lay the blame where it rests, truly. But Mandalorian Season 1, I was also not so hot on. I haven't talked about it on this channel because I want to try and make this a positive channel. But to me, Mandalorian, and I've, I've told other people this at the time when they were saying, like, should I watch it, should I not watch it? By the time it wrapped up, I said, watch the first three and watch the last three. The middle of the show, like, or the last two episodes of the first season one, anyway. The middle of the show in season one, to me, was, felt kind of flat. I was like, not interested, there's no storyline, where is this going? Because they were doing a whole lot of, like, anthology, one-and-done type things, which I like to read in comics from time to time, but you gotta have that ongoing storyline, those little hooks in there, to keep you going. And I thought season two was a vast improvement over season one. 
like by far this is the thing i was most excited to watch week to week so far during the pandemic and there hasn't been much honestly but this was fantastic i think because we had this ongoing thread of you must find baby yoda you must find his people the jedi and you must introduce him there and that was the quest and we were going on this quest and every episode had to do with this quest um you know whether it was like a side story of you know we're gonna go find some information so we can keep going on this quest things like that so i thought for for that reason alone the continuity and keeping the thread going and going and going over these eight episodes vastly improved the mandalorian season two for me um you know i thought the effects were good seeing bo katan and other mandalorians come in figuring out this thing of like oh well you know, Mando, Din Djarin, doesn't take off his helmet because he's a, a radical. He's in, like, a cult version of Mandalorianism, whatever it is. That was kind of wild. Um, interested to see that explored more, but I don't know if we will get the chance, after all. Um, Baby Grogu, still doing the same stuff. You know, let's talk about that name. Grogu, really? That's the best you could come up with? Like, Yoda, I'm like, all right, cool. But Grogu... Ew, basically, I don't like that name. Uh, what was the, there was a female version of whatever that race is called. They haven't named it yet, so I can say whatever it's called. Uh, whatever Yoda is, that, that race of aliens, there was a female version in episode one, if you recall. She was also in the De Jedi Council, and her name, I think, was like Yaddle or something. Also a bad name, bad name. Din Djarin, cool name. Grogu, come on, guys, let's try harder. Anyway, I don't know if we'll ever get to see Baby Grogu again. He did go off at the end, and it seems like if they wanted to end the Mandalorian story here, the story of Din Djarin, they could end it here. Like, it began with this little baby, and it ends with this little baby. So it's like bookended. So if you're going to tell more stories with Din Djarin, and I hope they do. I like Pedro Pascal a lot. Um, I hope he comes back and does more. I think they need a new quest, honestly. Give him a new quest. Figure it out tie it to Grogu or something like that, or tie it to something entirely different. But he needs a quest. I think you need a quest in this, these storylines. You need an ongoing storyline, the way that these you know digital streaming shows are told now. You need a quest to keep people interested in coming back week to week. Because otherwise, if it's like season one, where it's one and done episodes, where we're not really advancing the story, I don't know if I would be in it or not. So I think you need a quest for season three. Now, the way this thing ended, now, I was impressed. I really liked last week's episode where they had um, Bill Burr. I really liked that episode uh, where he took his helmet off and all this stuff. That was cool. This episode, I really liked. What I did not like was CGI, and I said spoilers, right? CGI Luke Skywalker. <clears throat> so I'm watching him on the hallway monitor. Like you know, I'm watching the show, and they're showing this guy this Jedi cut down these Death Trooper robots things, and I'm like, it's gotta be Luke, right? He's wearing all black, got the black cloak, he's got black boots, and they're showing him from behind. They're, like, legitimately, like, making him small on the screen, so you can't really tell who it is. Then I see a, a gloved hand in one of the shots. I'm like, oh, it's gotta be Luke, right? Like, what other Jedi wears gloves around here, you know? Um, and then I think you saw, like, the other hand... And then at the very end, he takes his lightsaber down and, like, shuts it off. And it, you find out it's green, and then you're like, oh, here it is. It's, it's Luke. Even though, like, I guess technically Jedi, they said, I think it was Clone Wars, you're only green or blue, something like that. Maybe it was. Anyway. I was like, and then you saw it. You saw Luke's lightsaber from Return of the Jedi just kind of shut off. Like, it was, it was in the screen. I was like, oh, that's Luke. Okay, how are we doing this? Is this going to be a recast? Is it going to be the digital version? Which, it did end up being the digital version of Luke Skywalker, similar to how they did uh, Moff Tarkin in Rogue One. The difference being, like, you know, Mark Hamill is still alive, and he can do the voice. He's just much older than this character was because this i guess takes place like they say they were saying like 10 years after return of the jedi so he's technically like 1993 luke or uh mark hamill and we're here in 2020 going into 2021 so he's far removed from looking like that and even i would say his voice is is maybe a little bit different too 
um, just being that much older. So I, I'm sure they did a little bit of like voice tweaking um, to make it look, maybe pitched a little bit higher to match what he was in Return of the Jedi or something like that. But um, they his face, it looked bad. I'm sorry. I know that people are going to be like, he looked just like Luke. I'm like, no, he looked bad. There was a reason that Luke's head was not this big. Like, if you're looking at my video, my head is, like, almost full frame. There was a reason Luke's head was not full frame. It was, like, way back here, so you can't see all the details. And you can kind of, like, oh, that kind of looks like Luke. Or, you know, this was as big as it got. And then as it got bigger, you're like, oh, is it is it looking that good? And then there went back to, like, a wide shot where his head's really, really small. I'm leaning back on my couch, and I can't get smaller. But that's all the... Uh, um, visual effects trick or whatever to make the details not as noticeably bad right the further you get away from something the smaller it looks and the less detail you can see if i get up real close to the camera and i turn it on 4k mode you're gonna see all my pores and all this other stuff um you know well i shoot in 1080p because it takes too much space on my phone on my on my uh for 4k but that's that's the reason why but anyway that was that was all for reasons. It was all a trick. The, the entire time they're shooting him from behind is because they didn't want to spend the money to do this CG version of Luke correctly. Like if you watch Grand Moff Tarkin and his scenes, and there's a digital breakdown of how they did those VFX. I think on the Rogue One Blu-ray, so it might be on Disney Plus as well. And also it's online somewhere else as well. I think on YouTube you can probably look it up on how they did it. They did an amazing job on that character. Luke, like if you put these two versions, these Star Wars doubles side by side, it varies. It varies a lot. And I would say it even varies from Grand Moff Tarkin in Rogue One to Leia in Rogue One. And I think Luke sides on is more on the side of Leia in Rogue One where she took her hood off and everybody's like, that's Princess Leia, I think. Why does she look so rubbery? I don't know. Like that's what Luke looked like to me. Not the Grand Moff Tarkin we got in Rogue One and that digital uh, replacement where I was like, oh my god, is Peter Cushing alive? Like, he's been dead for 50 years. That was impressive. This, not so much. So, it's definitely a TV show on a TV budget. Their effects are not, you know, that great. Me, personally, I think they should have recast Luke. And I know that's like hypocrisy or like Luke is sacrosanct in the Star Wars community, but... You've had people like fan casting young Luke for years now. Sebastian Stan, who plays the Winter Soldier on Marvel, is on the Disney payroll. And even Mark Hamill has come out and said like, hey, this guy looks just like me. Why not have Sebastian Stan just step in for Luke? And if it takes off, let's go for it. Get me a Luke training Jedi series with Sebastian Stan. I'd be fine with that. Like, we can recast James Bond. We've had... Three different Spider-Men, you know. Um, I'm ready to do it with Star Wars characters. Frankly, I'm ready to do it with Indiana Jones, although I don't think they ever will for Indiana Jones. But we can do it for James Bond and freaking Batman and Superman. We can do it for Star Wars. Come on. And I know there's different things like, oh, well, Brent, it's uh, the same continuity with Star Wars and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you didn't get uh, Lando recast. You recast Lando with a much younger version in Solo and young Han Solo and that. I mean, on the air rack, I think was okay. I just, I don't know. If you're going to do this digital stuff and if you're going to sprinkle it in, I guess maybe they're trying to keep it, like save it for special moments and stuff. And this was one of them. But I, I kind of wonder if you're ever going to get Grogu back in terms of Star Wars mythos or story because now he's tied to Luke. And if you're tied to Luke, that means you got to bring Luke in or you got to do something with him to take him off. And that means you got to see him and you got to spend the money to digitally de-age Mark Hamill. Um, you know, provided he's around this long, whenever they decide to do this, he's not a young buck anymore. Uh, you know, but hopefully he's continuing to stay healthy. You know, I don't want anybody to go, back, you know, to die or anything. But uh, how are you going to do that? This just gets ex more and more expensive as it is. So, I, I mean, we recast Alec Guinness for um, Obi-Wan Kenobi for Ewan McGregor. Come on. Now I know that was George's doing, but, like, let's just do this. If we're going to do it, let's do it. Uh, and tell some really cool stories. Because I think they're out there, and I think we're getting there with Star Wars, where we're figuring out, like, hey, there are a lot of other really cool stories we could tell in this world that 
don't just revolve around the Skywalker family or saga. And I'm I'm glad that that's happening. So, all in all, I think Mandalorian was a far, far better improvement in Season 2 than Season 1. Um, best episode? I really liked the episode with Bill Burr. Where he, they were interfering with... Um, you know the Imperials and you had the the moment where the Imperials saved them and they made that joke like I never thought that you'd ha be happy to see Imperials did you I thought that was a great moment and the, the moments where he took off his helmet because he doesn't do it all the time um are really impactful you know really impactful I, I really did like season you know the ep first episode here where you had um the Boba Fett armor show up with um I want to say Raylan Givens because that's how I know him from uh, justified, but, uh, gosh, what was the actor's name? Timothy Oliphant showing up in the Boba Fett armor was hilarious. And I love the way that, that this armor looks different on Timothy Oliphant than when, um, oh gosh, all these actors' names, when the guy who played Django Fett showed up, Tamura Morrison, thank you, Brain, for figuring that out. He's playing his clone son, Boba Fett. And Tamora Morrison's like this, you know, he's not an old man, but he's like in his 50s, pushing 60, who knows. And he's like, he's got my body, my physique, not like a movie star's physique. He's like shorter, he's squatter, he's wider, he's got a little bit of like a dad bod. And I'm like, yeah, let's go! Every fat Star Wars fan rejoiced when Boba Fett showed up kind of with the paunch in his armor in, uh, what was it, chapter 14 or something like that. We're like, yeah, come on, fat, fat Boba Fett, let's go. Um, that made me happy. I was like, hey, now I can be Boba Fett and not feel bad that I'm different. I'll just be older Boba Fett. Like, that's cool. Um, I got a little bit too, so yeah, whatever. But um, no, I really dug it. I really dug it. I really dug. And I'm, I'm like looking at the differences between Boba Fett's armor and Din Djarin's armor and not just like how they're painted different, one paints one, the other doesn't, how they're sculpted differently, and I'm wondering if Boba Fett and Bo-Katan's armor is Beskar or not. Obviously, um, Din Djarin's is. Does that make him like a pure Mandalorian if he's got real Beskar armor versus these other guys? Um, you know, I really liked it. I really, really liked it. But I think if we're coming back, if we're doing a Mando Season 3 starring Din Djarin, we need a new quest. We need a new quest um, to keep it all together because I think that vastly improved season two. So my favorite episode, we're going to go with chapter 15, the seventh episode of this season. Um, I think this, I forget who it was, the the Believer, it, it was called or something like that with Bill Burr. That was my favorite. Shortly followed by chapter, the first episode of the season, which will be chapter nine on your Disney Plus app. I'm scrolling through it here. Um, where you first saw the Boba Fett armor and had that big, like, monster and stuff. And that, that had a weird moment, too, where they went, like, full widescreen. Um, most of the shot, or, you know, or full 60 by 9, full frame, I guess you would call it now. Um, most of the show is shot in widescreen, so you get these black bands, and, you know, and you're like, where's the rest of my I'm watching this on TV, why don't you use it? And then they, they, they opened it up slowly in that episode as that monster came out of its cave. And then use the full like 16 by 9. I was like, this show looks great full frame. Why don't you do it all the time? It's a TV show anyway. It's just like this. We want to be cinematic. And I'm like, you know, freaking Avengers 1 directed by Joss Whedon was full frame. 16 by 9 ratio. Star Wars, you can do the same thing too. Now, from an effect standpoint, maybe it's cheaper to have less pixels, you know. Um, and that probably helps a little bit too with the budget. You don't have to render out all that stuff, but that's just me. Anyways, Mandalorian season two, two thumbs up from me. Really, really liked it. Big improvement on season one, in my opinion. I know a lot of people really loved season one as well. So what did you guys think of Mandalorian season two? Let me know down below what your favorite episode was and why. And we will see you guys next time here on BK's Bullets in the funny pages. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks.